Hey gang, JC here, and this is the Daily Dose for Thursday, September 15, 2011, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. Great television archives up top. And, of course, we have Sexually Speaking with Dr. Kathy Naughton right below. And uh, just a lot of other cool stuff. Punch around on this website and have a little fun. Of course, Eye Candy is right below. Funny picture of Michelle Bachman yesterday. People liked that one. All right, rock and roll poll question. Results from yesterday. Next Monday night, the Charlie Sheen Roast, the Ashton Kutcher debut on Two and a Half Men on CBS, and the Rams game against the Giants are all going to be on at essentially the same time. So which of those shows is going to get the majority of your attention? And we understand that people have U-verse and you can record four things at one time or you can watch one they're not on exactly at the same time. So we understood all that, but it was still sort of a question of what, what are you most excited about seeing on Monday night? And overwhelmingly, your answer was the Rams at the Giants, 52%. Two and a half men, 35%, and only 13% are interested in the Charlie Sheen Rust. I'm fascinated by how low that number is. Now, if the Rams weren't playing that night, you got to believe those numbers would be really, really different, but that's what we have for you today. All right, Brenda Warner has a new book. Now, uh, she's been out uh, touring and uh, doing book signings and stuff like that, and she's going to be on The View today, and she's sort of popping up all over the place pushing her memoirs. What do you think of Brenda Warner? What do you think of her? You know, a lot of people said, well, she wasn't the quarterback. She was married to the quarterback. She didn't really have any talent or anything like that. She, uh, you know, uh, was known to call in on radio shows and defend her husband and, and, and just seemed to be in the limelight a lot. And on the other hand, people said, I don't care. She does so much charitable work, so much unbelievable charitable work. And she doesn't just talk the talk, she walks the walk. So where are you? on Brenda Warner. A, she's terrific and her charitable work with Kurt is an inspiration. B, it's probably possible to accomplish a lot of the same goals she has without being the center of attention as often as she's become. Or C, she's way too over the top for me. Please answer our rock and roll poll question in the corner. We'll have results for you tomorrow. By now, you heard the stories about Sarah Palin. She liked black guys and cocaine back in the 80s, and within nine months of her marrying Todd, she was apparently carrying on, and um, she was a sports reporter for a local TV station in Alaska when a then Glenn Rice, who was still playing for the University of Michigan, bopped in. They had a thing. Glenn Rice confirms the fact that they had sex and actually goes into quite a few details about the relationship. He was crazy about her, actually, but this was within nine months of her getting married to Todd. Um, so, anyhow, and, and there's stories about her snorting lines of coke over an overturned 55-gallon oil drum while she was out snowmobiling with friends. So, this will probably be a future topic of discussion on talk radio and perhaps here at jconline.com. Stay tuned, as they say. The holy grail of celebrity nudes. The photographs yesterday that surfaced of Scarlett Johansson are making the rounds. She didn't post them. Her account was hacked. FBI looking into it. They have also, and when I say they, they think that there might be the same group of people responsible for hacking into the accounts of Jessica Alba, Vanessa Hudgens, Christina Aguilera, Miley Cyrus, Demi Lovato, and Selena Gomez. FBI is on it. Us Weekly Magazine says Cameron Diaz and Alex Rodriguez have broken up. He actually dropped her because he thought she was a fly ball. Kirstie Alley has lost 100 pounds since her, her stint on Dancing with the Stars, but we've seen that happen before, haven't we? News anchors. Big news anchors on cable news. Shepard Smith just put his 2,300 square foot downtown apartment in, uh, in Manhattan on the market for $4 million. Nicholas Cage was once awakened in the middle of the night by a naked man eating a fudgicle. How many times has this happened to you? Um, Cage was at the Toronto International Film Festival yesterday hyping his new movie Trespass and was asked about home invasions. Remember the Salahis. Yesterday on Trisha's Trash, and of course Trisha and I are on the Big 550 KTRS every weekday between noon and 3. That's 5.50 a.m. Might want to listen. We have a good time every day. We've got Eric Mink and Smash and Joe Marlotti, and we've got a legal guy, and Al Lubosky joins us on Monday. So uh, the Salahis, uh, White House party crashers, and then she was on Real Housewives of D.C., and now yesterday, Trish reported that Tariq Salahi, the old man, said that I think she's been kidnapped. Well, it turn I can't write stuff like this. I cannot write stuff like this. It turns out 
that she has run off with Neil Sean, the guitarist from Journey. <laughs> Give up. Simon Cowell says, if you're singing for me on The X Factor, don't sing these songs. There are five. R. Kelly's I Can Believe I Can Fly, uh, Etta James, Ed Lass, Righteous Brothers, Unchained Melody, Jason Mraz, I'm Yours, or John Legend's Ordinary People. He's sick of hearing all of them. Spinner.com is throwing together a list of the most iconic rock star accessories. This is pretty good. I like this. And here's a rundown of their selections. John Lennon's glasses, James Brown's capes, Madonna's cone bra, Slash's top hat, Bono's shades, Stevie Nicks' shawls, Jimi Hendrix's uh, headbands, Devo's energy domes, which are just look like plastic flower pots to me, Gwen Stefani's bindi, that's that uh, little thing she had right in the forehead there, Elvis Costello, Buddy Holly, and Lisa Loeb's uh, geeky sort of nerdy eyeglasses, Kiss's platform boots, David Burns' shoulder pads, and little Stephen Van Zandt's bandanas. That was fun. I liked that one. Is the tattoo boom finally over? According to the American Academy of Dermatology, the number of people uh, getting tattoos has dropped 10% since 2008. And they also say that tattoo removal numbers are skyrocketing. Right now, about 14% of Americans have some sort of tattoo. Even in this modern era of people just sharing every shred of personal information with somebody and then complaining because their privacy has been invaded, I don't understand it. The one thing that people still won't talk about is their salaries. 90% of people say they ain't talk, talk about their salary with nobody. Men's Health Magazine just released a ranking of the 100 United States cities by education level. Dumbest city in America, Miami. Smartest city, Madison, Wisconsin. St. Louis pulling in at an anemic 79. Ninth season of Family Guy DVD set includes a 22-minute special called The History of the World According to the Family Guy. There's a clip online if you're interested. Uh, a new study says that if college athletes were actually paid the going rate for what they do, the average college athlete would be getting paid six figures. That's interesting because most of them are already making seven. <laughs> All right, the uh, game is on here. Leno has Charlie Sheen tonight. Conan has Ashton Kutcher. And here we go. Birthday today, Oliver Stone, 65, wrote Conan the Barbarian, wrote Scarface, and then directed Platoon. Born on the 4th of July, Wall Street, uh, Talk Radio, The Doors, JFK, Any Given Sunday, Natural Born Killers, W, and he wrote most of those movies too. My favorite moment for Oliver Stone, believe it or not, is a very, very short clip. Could have been more than 15 seconds in the movie Dave with Kevin Klein. It's a scene with Larry King, and it is the funniest thing ever, and I, I, I wasn't crazy about Oliver Stone for a very long time, but when I realized that he had a sense of humor and could make fun of himself and appeared in the movie Dave in the capacity that he did, I was like, you know what? All right, all right, I get it now. You're a knucklehead like the rest of us. You don't take yourself as seriously as I thought. And it was just a great, great moment in film. All right, JC's Eye Candy, I almost used yesterday when uh, Trish appeared on Fox 2 to uh, plug the Lebanese Fest. And, you know, you normally would put like Trish Gazelle, KTRS Radio, or something like that. And in this particular case, as you'll see here, it says, Trish Gazelle, Lebanese radio personality. <laughs> ha! All right. Well, with the Rams as banged up as they are going into the Monday night game against the Giants, uh, this coming Monday night, I thought maybe the Rams might want to take a look at these three guys. It's a picture of me, my neighbor Paul Mirzwa, and my nemesis, Alan Bober, in our old south side of Chicago football uh, outfits. I mean, shoulder pads under... Uh, a sweatshirt is really all we had. We weren't rich kids. This is about circa 1966. It is the picture right below what you're looking at right now. Check it out. I, I just thought it was a marvel and stuff like this whole black and white photos. All right, uh, JC's Eye Candy today, as we said, you got that. JC's Rock and Roll Poll today is what do you think of Brenda Warner? You like her? You're eh, sort of in the middle, or you're like, oh, please, enough of this woman. So uh, please answer our Ron Gallo poll question. We'll have results for you tomorrow. That's it. JC's Daily Dose for Thursday, September 15th, 2011. A combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye.